Hi guys, in our previous um, lesson, we discussed how we can write um, urgent letters. In our tutorial today, we are going to talk about how you can write non-urgent referral and transfer letters. If you are visiting my channel for the first time, I really advise and recommend that you hit the subscribe button below so that anytime I release any video, you will be the first to be notified. Okay, so if you've not um, watched my previous um, lecture, I would strongly recommend that you do that before coming to this particular um, lecture. Now, when you have a case note, how do you identify if the case note is urgent or non-urgent? If you remember clearly in our previous letter, in our previous uh, lecture, I explained to you that whenever you see any of these four points, it makes that letter urgent letter. That means if you if you can't see any of these four points in the case notes, it means that case notes should be treated as a non-urgent letter. If in the case note it's not clearly stated that the case is an urgent one or the letter is not going to the emergency department or the let you are not write, you are not writing this letter to um, a healthcare worker on duty or this patient is not for admission and stabilization if you can't find any of these four points treat that letter as a non urgent letter all right so i'm going to walk you through on how you can organize your letters when they are non-urgent, whether it's a referral letter or a transfer letter. When a case note is given to you, you should be able to organize that case note in a way that the information will flow um, perfectly and the reader will be able to get the purpose of the letter clearly. Now, let's look, just look at the left side of your screen. Look at these arrows. That's the flow, how your letter should flow when you are writing a non-urgent letter. After the introduction, you should move on to the treatment so far. Unlike in the urgent letters, you cannot move on to treatment so far. So when you are done with the introduction, the next is the treatment so far, followed by the current situation. Then you discuss the background paragraphs and then finally you make your recommendations. Now, in your introduction, just like in the urgent letter, in your introduction too, you should be able to identify the purpose of the letter. What do I mean by the purpose of the letter? The purpose of the letter is the summary of what you want the reader to do for this patient. If you're not very clear about what you mean by this purpose of the letter, I really recommend that you go back to my YouTube videos and select the, the um, tutorial on how to identify the purpose of the letter to get it out clearly. Now, when you get the purpose of the letter, you ask yourself, why will the patient need this thing to be done for him or her? That will help you to identify the problem because there must be a problem on ground why you want something to be done for the patient. So these are the two points you bring in in your introduction. Okay. Now, after the introduction, you move on to the treatment so far. What do I mean by the treatment so far? Is the summary of how the illness started and has progressed to include symptoms, signs, investigations, and treatment. Let's say that the patient came in with, um, with ectopic pregnancy. The patient came in today with ectopic pregnancy, but this patient has been seeing you for some couple of days, let's say two weeks now. So the treatment so far, we start from the two weeks ago when this patient first came. What did the patient present with? These are the signs and symptoms. What are your examination findings? These are the signs. What investigation did you carry out from this patient? And what treatment have you given this patient so far to resolve this problem? That's what we mean by the treatment so far. All these points will make up your treatment so far okay now when you are done with discussing the treatment so far you now move on to the current situation now this patient is here with you today what are the presenting complaints today what are the examination findings are there investigation that you carried out for this patient today did you offer any treatment for this patient now this most current the current situation these are what you this the current situation 
are what you discuss in this particular um part after the treatment so far now when you are done discussing the current situation how the patient is doing presently is the condition getting worse is it getting better you will now move on to talk about the background paragraph what do we mean by the background paragraph this will include other relevant information other relevant information that will help the reader to identify the purpose of this letter why this is happening Maybe this uh, patient um, has other medical condition. Let's assume, for example, the issue we are dealing with here is atopic pregnancy. But this patient has been taking a, um, this patient has been, um, was diagnosed of bleeding disorder maybe five years ago. Okay. This is a very um, important um, medical history from a patient that is now having a topic pregnancy or which most likely the treatment will be surgery so you have to bring in that information in your background paragraph okay maybe this patient is also on oral contraceptive pills on some medications to treat the illness or the patient has been taking other medication some medication to treat some chronic illnesses that the patient has you have to mention those medications in the background you also talk about the family and social history. Maybe the, um, in the family history, there have been history of atopic pregnancy. There have been history of bleeding issues. And the patient has been smoking a lot of cigarettes and taking a lot of alcohol. These are the type of information you bring in on that background information. Okay. They, they are not the reason why this information, they are not the reason why you are referring this patient now, but they are important because they will affect the patient management. They will, they will affect the purpose of that letter. Now, when you are done with the background, the next thing you have to talk about is the recommendation. What do we mean by the recommendation? This will include the patient's future needs. What and what exactly do you want the reader to do for this patient? Do you want the reader to further investigate this patient? Do you want the reader to offer some treatment? Do you want the reader to, to modify this patient's um, lifestyle? Okay. Any other thing you want this reader to do for the patient, if all the patient future needs, these are what you now bring in under um, this particular um, um, paragraph called the recommendation. Please take note while writing this letter, it doesn't mean that you should have one, two, three, four, five, five paragraphs. No, the only paragraph that can that will always be one paragraph is the introduction for your treatment so far. It depends on the number of information, the volume of information that you have would this will determine whether you are going to have one paragraph to discuss this two paragraphs to discuss this or three paragraphs to discuss this the same principle applies here you can have one paragraph two or three the same thing applies here and also in the recommendation paragraph so um there is, you are not limited to in to a particular number of paragraphs that you are supposed to write but they've made it clearly in your write-up that your writing should be between um, 180 to 200 meaning you should not write too much above that 200 and should not write too less below um, 180 words okay now this prototype number one there are four prototypes that you can use when a letter is non-urgent unlike when a letter is an urgent one you only follow one pattern in this regard in this case when a case note is non urgent letter you have four prototypes now i've discussed this first one but before we discuss other ones let's take a look at what makes um the differences that you have okay now look at this flow from introduction to treatment so far to current situation to background and recommendation that's for this number one let's look at number two pattern that you can have if you look at this second pattern you can see the introduction is coming immediately after the background paragraph is coming immediately after the introduction before the treatment so far current situation and finally your recommendation if you look at the third pattern you can see you have two backgrounds paragraph one coming immediately after the introduction and another coming just before the recommendation and finally if you look at this pattern you can see you don't have any background paragraph here okay so what is actually making the changes or the that will determine which pattern to follow will depend on 
the paragraph how it depends on the background paragraph how important is the background paragraph now let's go to the first one that i explained now if you look at here this background information is here because it is not the cost when the background information the background information you have when i what i mean by the background information i've already explained other medical condition long-standing medication the patient has been taking family and social history as it may affect this situation we have on ground these are what we call background information so if the background information is directly why this patient developed the situation let's say the situation here is ectopic pregnancy but what the in the background information let's say in the history you were told that this patient has been having recurrent pelvic inflammatory diseases okay and has been on um oral contraceptive pills these are high risk factors okay they can directly lead to why someone will come down with atopic pregnancy in that case that information will come here but let's assume those information are not in the case note what we just have is maybe the patient is smoking cigarettes the patient has a um, bleeding disorder taking a lot of alcohol this information they are important but they are not directly linking to why this patient will come down with atopic pregnancy so in that case i will leave my background to be in this position that's just before the recommendation paragraph okay now look at pattern number two where the background information is coming immediately after the introduction in this case if the background information is directly um the cause of why the patient developed the situation using the situation i mentioned earlier ectopic pregnancy as a, a case study here and as i said earlier the patient have having recurrent pid taking a um let's say oral contraceptive pills these are important background information in that case those background information will come immediately after the introduction you have to talk about those ones before you now start telling the reader what the problem when the this atopic pregnancy when the issue first started okay i'm just using that as an example after that you move on to the current situation how the problem is now and finally you move to the recommendation now sometimes the background information some of the background information will be leading to the problem why some of the background information are not directly leading to the problem okay let's let's say that um, let's assume all those things that i've talked about now the patient has been having recurrent pid the patient has been on other contraceptive pills the patient smokes the patient has hypertension now for the the history of smoking now the history for, of hypertension now those ones can come here okay the issue of taking alcohol smoking hypertension those ones can come here because they are not directly why this patient will develop atopic pregnancy but the history of pelvic inflammatory disease the history of uh taking oral contraceptive pills all those ones can come up here why is this so in oet letter writing the more important information have to come up before the less important information so that's why you should organize your letter in that manner so after the introduction you discuss the part of the background information that is directly causing the problem before you start telling us when this problem started maybe a month ago two weeks ago and then finally boils it down to how this problem is now presenting today or currently and then finally you bring in the remaining part of the background information that are important but they are not directly causing this ectopic pregnancy now and finally you make your recommendation what and what exactly do you want this reader to do for this patient now if you look at this um this um pattern number four you can see that this pattern does not have any background information let's assume that the background information you have in that letter writing has no bearing to that case note let's say for instance that in in your case note you are told that maybe under the social history that this patient that this patient that has a topic pregnancy play game of chess she likes visit, visiting friends and uh, she had a, a she had um let's say viral illness 20 years ago now this information they are not important now they are totally irrelevant in that case your letter might not have background information because everything in that background every other information that's supposed to be background information they are not relevant so you you shouldn't add them 
in your letter writing. In that case, your letter will follow this format. After the introduction, you discuss the treatment so far, the current situation, and finally your recommendation. Okay, so what you are going to do now, let's look at this uh, case um, um, scenario. Let's look at this case notes. Sorry, this um, the letter. So let's... Um, This slide. Okay, let's take a look at um, this um, case note. Sorry, there's a mistake here. Mm. Sorry, guys. All right, so let's take a look at this case note. If you have if you have already gone through my tutorial on the urgent letter, we are using a similar case note now, but we made some changes to fit non-urgent letter. Okay? Now, if you go through this case notes, first of all, we have to come here in the writing task to see what we are asked to do. Okay? We come to the writing task. In the writing task, using the information given in the case note, write a, a letter, write a letter, write a letter to the dietitian at Department of Nutrition and Dietetics, Stroke, Mandeville's Hospital, um, High Wycombe. In your letter, briefly explain patient relevant history and request a visit and assessment of her swallowing function and nutritional status. So here we are asked to write a letter. Now, from what we've from what we've read here, we we cannot say that this letter is an urgent one because one, they didn't mention or that this letter is an urgent one first. Number two, this letter is not going to emergency department okay and we are asked to request a visit and assessment of uh, her swallowing function so this patient is not for admission and stabil and stabilization finally we are not writing this letter to a healthcare worker on duty so those any of those four points are not here it means this letter is a non-urgent letter okay now what is the problem why with this person now let's look at the purpose of this letter this is the purpose of this letter. The purpose of this letter is what we want the reader to do for this patient. Okay. We are requesting a visit and assessment of her swallowing, of, of her swallowing function and nutritional status. So this is the purpose of this letter. Now, the next thing you will now ask yourself will be this. Why would this patient need a visit and assessment of her swallowing function and nutritional status? Now, if you go through this letter from the beginning to the end, you will discover that this patient is at a high, has a high risk of aspirating anytime she fits. So this is the problem. Now, these two points, these are what you are going to use for your introduction. This one is the purpose, what the summary of what you want the reader to do for this patient. Why this is the problem. So you are going to use these two points to construct your introduction. Now, after highlighting these two points, the next thing you have to do now is to select information that will help you to write this letter effectively. So we are going to start from the beginning to select information that will help the reader understand why this patient is at risk of aspiration and why this patient will need um, will need um, assessment of uh, swallowing function and nutritional status so we start from the patient details okay from the patient detail definitely we have to add the patient's name add the patient date of birth the address of this patient will have to add it because the dietitian has to visit this patient so we want to know where is this patient living Okay, looking at the background, um, this patient's background information, that's from starting from the medical history. Um, the information we we'll, are we'll going to select will be information that will help this reader understand why this patient is at risk of aspiration and also why this patient will need urgent assessment and um, we need them um, to be visited and assessed for swallowing function and nutritional status. 
Now, in 2002, these patients were diagnosed with bilateral knee osteoarthritis. We are writing a dietitian. Bilateral knee osteoarthritis we may not put this patient at risk of um, aspiration. Neither will it um, affect the management of this patient in, case of, in, in terms of assessing the nutritional status. So I might not want to add this. The second one, diabetes mellitus type 2 on diabetic diet. So we are writing a dietitian and this patient is on diabetic diet for diabetes mellitus type 2 and we are requesting for assessment of nutritional status. So we are going to add this information. Okay. We are going to add this uh, information. Yeah. Now, in 2015, these patients were diagnosed of ischemic heart disease. Right? This patient has ischemic heart disease. I don't see how that will affect the assessment of this patient. Our assessment of this patient's nutritional status or swallowing function or help the leader understand why this patient is having um, the risk of aspiration. So, I will not add this. In 2018, this patient developed stroke. Now having unsteady gait and on physiotherapy. Yeah, stroke can, uh, stroke can predispose one to, it makes people to have difficulty swallowing. So when someone has stroke, part of the body is paralyzed. So this might affect the person's swallowing function. So these are important information to add to this um, dietitian. This patient has dementia. Right, confused and disoriented, only understand simple instruction. We are requesting for assessment. So this reader has to talk to this patient. In order to help in this assessment, the reader has to understand that this patient has dementia, is confused and disoriented, and it's also affecting this patient's eating habits as discussed um, um, later, where they say he has no teeth, then shop is but already uses it due to disorientation. So this information is important. We have to add it. This patient has been having chronic constipation. If this patient is having chronic constipation, it will affect this patient's nutritional status. So you will consider adding it. This patient has gained weight, 15 kg within six months. This is important information in assessing this patient's nutritional status. Current weight is 400 kg. We are asking a dietitian to assess this patient's nutritional status. This is important. No medications or food allergy. This is also important. Okay, this patient does not have any food allergies, or any medication allergies or food allergy. So in case the dietitian wants to make a recommendation for any medication, he can go ahead and do that. Also understand it doesn't have any food allergies. So this is important information to the dietitian. This, this patient has no teeth. Denture, dentures are prescribed, but she rarely wears them, wears them. So due to disorientation, this is important information that the dietitian need to know. This patient has increased appetite, eats more than six times a daily, full portions of daily meal, mainly biscuits. This patient eats a lot of junk and all. We have to let the reader know about this information. So you can see under the medical history, the only information I didn't add at this because they are not relevant in this letter writing. So I didn't include them. But the rest are, are relevant to the purpose or the problem of this letter. So these are the two points you use to select the information that you will use in your letter writing. Now, let's look at the medication this patient is taking. We said the osteoarthritis is not relevant, so I don't see the need talking about the medication. The ischemic heart disease is not relevant, I don't see the need. But if you mention that it's on laxative lactulose, that's fine. You can decide to add this, that's fine. Even if you don't add it, it's still okay anyway. All right, so let's go to the social history. Now, looking at the social history of this patient, this patient newly moved into a a, a dementia home, no friends, increasing, increasingly dependent on nursing staff, no smoking, no alcohol. This information, they are neither here nor there. To me, I might not want to add them. But if you let the leader know that it doesn't take alcohol, does not smoke, that's fine. Okay. If you want to add this, you can add. But to me, they are not strong points in this letter writing. So I might not want to add them in, in my letter writing. Uh, okay, so let's look at the treatment, um, the, this patient treatment records. Okay, looking at this patient treatment record, on 30th May 2022, this patient had chest infection. Okay, 
like uh, two weeks after he started experiencing occasional coughs, episodes of shortness of breath, and increased respiration. And then on the 18th of June, he started having sporadic truth clearing after eating and drinking. If you look at this information, this is these are just pointers to show you that this patient has actually been having um ex exhibiting signs to tell us that she's actually at risk of aspiration that's why she had that chest infection long time ago and now having occasional cough <laughs> showing that this patient is at risk of aspiration it's shortness of breath um occasionally and then anytime she eats um eat and drink she start clearing her throat so this is a point so this this will make up the treatment so far so it's all started here you have to summarize all this starting from here to here this is the treatment so far now what is now the current situation here the current situation here is the episode of um is the episode of of choking that this patient had yesterday which is today is 5th of july so this patient had choked on a meal, turned blue, breathless, grabbed her throat and coughed very hard, the piece of food removed. So you just have to summarize, you all have to give all these details. And this were the vital signs of presentation. And after like um after like some like an hour, the patient was reassessed, there were no longer complaints, everything came down to normal. So what do we do here? This information, this is our treatment so far, right? So this is uh, this is our treatment so far starting from here we'll just summarize from here so starting from when this this risk of aspiration started that's what we mean by when the treatment so far started so you summarize now after summarizing the next thing you are now going to now talk about is the current situation so we have to still summarize this because this is now okay let me use another another color for this so this is now our current situation now okay this is our current situation so this is how you select your information after selecting this information you will now organize your work now looking at this letter this letter is not is a non-urgent letter okay meaning the treatment so far has to come now the background information are there some information in the background information that must have led to why this patient is having risk of aspiration the answer is yes this patient has no teeth, no dentures, wear, really wear dentures, eat a lot, um, eat a lot, and this patient also had stroke. This information puts this patient at risk of aspiration. Every other information that I've selected can come down before the recommendation paragraph. That means in this letter, I'm going to have two background paragraph, paragraphs. So let's see the format that I followed in writing this letter. Now, this is the address, the dates, greeting, and now the heading. If you look at my introduction, I would appreciate if you can visit Jennifer in order to assess her ability to swallow and um, ability to swallow and nutritional status as she is, as she has a high risk of aspirating anytime she feeds. Okay, here again, this is the problem. She has a high risk of aspiration anytime she feeds. And this is the purpose of this letter. The purpose of this letter is to visit Jennifer in order to assess her swallowing and nutritional status. So these are the two points I used to construct the introduction. Now, after the introduction, I now started with a background information that directly linked to why this patient will be having this problem. Jennifer does not have any teeth and is supposed to be wearing dentures but sometimes forget to wear them due to confusion and disorientation associated with dementia. This was diagnosed last year. She had a stroke in 2018 negatively impacting her gait and may be contributing to her swallowing difficulty. So this, this part of the background information is directly leading to why this patient has this issue. So I have to bring it up here. After this background information, I went to the treatment so far to summarize. She has subtly been exhibiting features of aspiration. For instance, she had a chest infection about a month ago, following which she started to clear her throat whenever she eats or drinks and sometimes do have coughs, shortness of breath and fast breathing. 
You can see how I expanded this note and I summarized it, brought out important information and expressed it in my own terms, in my own words. Okay, so this is the treatment. This paragraph is the treatment so far. After the treatment so far, I moved on to the current situation. What now happens currently about this issue? About this issue of um, of um, aspiration. While eating yesterday, she choked on a piece of food that probably was not properly chewed, but managed to cough it out successfully and her vital signs are currently stable. You can see how I summarized those bulk of information. I don't have to highlight all those details, telling that the head is he grabbed the throat, cough, turned blue, all those are not relevant. Just summarize, bring out the important gist and use it to make your um, same thing. So this is the current situation. Now, after the current situation, I moved on to another background. These are important information, but they are not directly the reason why this patient is choking on piece of uh, is having aspiration. Please note that she has increased appetite, eats voraciously mainly junks, and her weight has increased by 15 kg within a space of five months and currently weighs 100 kg in bracket the BMI. She is diabetic and has no allergies to medications or food so this is the second background and finally kindly this is my recommendation i don't have much to say this is just the only what i have to say which is still the purpose of the letter but what i did here i have to paraphrase it i don't have to recopy this again i have to paraphrase it to make it my recommendation kindly evalu evaluate her situation in order to minimize her risks and prevent a reoccurrence Please contact me if you need more information. Yours faithfully charging us. Now, if you want to, to calculate your word count, your word count, to calculate your word count, you just start from here to this place, to the recommendation. That's what you use as your word count. And mine is showing me 208, which is not bad at all. So this is the um, letter writing, and this is how you write non-urgent letter, whether a, a referral letter or a transfer letter. This is where we come to the end of this um, lesson. If you have um, any question, you can drop them in the chat box. And if you like this tutorial, please share, like, comment, and um, subscribe to my channel.